so welcome students today's class is on placental anomalies and prenatal diagnosis so first is placenta previa so now, now normally the placenta is attached to the upper uterine segment so it is attached either to the fundus in this region or the upper part of the body here but when the placenta is attached partially or fully in the lower uterine segment this is called placenta previa and this may cause difficulty during childbirth or bleeding during childbirth so here we have the placenta getting attached to the lower uterine segment lower part of the body this is first degree placenta previa here we have the attachment of placenta extending up to the internal os but it is not covering it this is second degree placenta previa here the placenta is covering the cervix but when the internal os dilates during delivery then uh, delivery is still possible by normal route so in first second and third degree placenta previa normal delivery is possible while this is fourth degree placenta previa where the placenta is covering the cervix in such a manner that even when the internal os dilates a normal delivery is not possible so here cesarean section has to be done so this was about placenta previa where the placenta is attached partially or fully to the lower uterine segment then there may be anomalies in shape of placenta so may, we may have a placenta that has got two parts and this is called bidiscoidal placenta and this is the umbilical cord coming out of these two parts the placenta may be one but it may be lobed like this and this is the umbilical cord coming out the placenta may be thin and paper like and not of the typical disc shape such a placenta is called diffuse placenta a small part of the placenta may be separated from the larger part such a placenta has been given a fancy name placenta succincturiata there may be a hole in the placenta this is called fenestrated placenta and the placenta may be covered by the fold of decidua on the peripheral aspect and this type of placenta is called circumvallate placenta so when the placenta is being covered by a fold of decidua on the periphery that is called circumvallate placenta so these are the anomalies of shape of placenta now there may be anomalies in the attachment of the cord so normally the cord is attached to the center of the placenta but the cord may be attached to the peripheral edge of the placenta such a insertion of the cord is given a fancy name battle door placenta the cord may be attached to the amnion and from there the uh, vessels may ramify to the placenta such an insertion of cord is called velamentous insertion of the cord the cord may show branching and further branching before getting attached to the placenta and such a placenta is called furcate placenta so there may be an uh, there may be anomalies in the attachment of the cord as you can make out here marginal insertion of the cord velamentous insertion of the cord and furcate insertion of the cord now we come to prenatal diagnosis these are the diagnostic techniques we can use before the birth so they are prenatal before the birth so first is ultrasonography now normally ultrasound is done two times during the pregnancy one is during the first trimester to confirm the due date and then at 18 to 22 weeks between 18 to 22 weeks to confirm the normal anatomy of the would be born baby so this is ultrasonography it tells us about fetal well-being it tells us about the due date of delivery then we have amniocentesis here a sample of amniotic fluid is taken to obtain fetal cells for chromosomal analysis now under ultrasound guidance a needle is passed and the sample is taken this test is done between 15 to 20 weeks of gestation so we can make out here in this figure that the needle is being passed the placenta is preferably avoided and then the sample is taken so what are the indications of amniocentesis one is maternal age over 35 or when there is suspicion of down syndrome or trisomy 18 where there is a previous child with a genetic disease or metabolic disorder or when neural tube defects are to be determined whether it is there or not in that case a high alpha fetoprotein will be obtained from the sample and in the third trimester to assess the fetal lung maturity when required this test can also tell about rh incompatibility so amniocentesis is an invasive procedure and uh, this helps in determining whether the child is having any genetic disease so chromosomal analysis is done then is chorionic villus biopsy now this is more accurate in detecting genetic abnormalities compared to amniocentesis and 
another advantage is it can be done earlier from 10 to 12 weeks of pregnancy here a catheter is passed either by a vagina or trans abdominal route to the developing placenta under ultrasound guidance but this test does not detect neural tube defects birth defects rh incompatibility these this these can be detected by amniocentesis but not the chorionic villus biopsy so the advantage of this chorionic villus biopsy is it can be done earlier and it is very accurate in detecting genetic abnormalities so uh, these prenatal diagnostic techniques you know they tell us about the fetal well-being and when there is a suspicion of chromosomal abnormality then amniocentesis or chorionic villus biopsy can be done and this helps the parents to decide whether they want to keep a child or not if the genetic abnormalities are there so if they want to keep a child then they prepare accordingly if they don't want to keep the child they can go for abortion so when suspicion is there then these uh, prenatal diagnostic techniques like amniocentesis or chorionic villus biopsy they can be done ultrasound i've told you is done normally during the pregnancy two times now these amniocentesis and chorionic villus biopsy do carry risks and the risks for chorionic villus biopsy are slightly higher what are these risks miscarriage infection or injury to the baby leaking of amniotic fluid vaginal bleeding because these are invasive procedures unlike ultrasonography so here some risk is definitely there and that risk is more in case of chorionic villus biopsy so this is a cartoon i have drawn where the child is thanking the born baby is thanking the umbilical cord for everything isn't it true so till the next time we meet it's bye from my side this poem i've already shown you so bye bye students and if you need notes you can uh, in